Kentucky. And now, back to the fair. Well, you can turn the music down now. Uh, I can't. No, turn, we can't. I can't yeah. turn that down. It's that point in the uh, Gallo Show where we just say, you know, the band's in the background, so we'll work through it. All right, let's talk about the infrastructure bill. Okay. Uh, I know you guys got to be waiting on it, and I, if you could bring that mic a little bit closer, it may uh, help out a little bit. Okay. But, I mean, everybody's waiting. The Lieutenant Governor, a few moments ago, we have no idea what it's going to be and what's tied to it, but uh, it should be a... Some people are saying it's not going to be as much as they earlier thought. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, I don't know. I try to look at things daily, and it changes, so I I would hate to speculate. But certainly, we need to be ready to receive those monies and have a plan in place as best we can without knowing what the stipulations will be at this point, Paul. So as soon as we get a little more information, I hope to conduct some hearings and have some meetings and and get some things in order ready for that money. Can you... Well, there are some people saying, well, you know, we, we're, we're putting this and that into it. We did the money that came in from um, several different sources, like the lottery and everything else. And a lot of people don't think it's being used the right way or is it being used? Is it having any effect? And I tell them, because I've had a chance to talk to the commissioners, too, uh, that it is. I mean, we're getting some things done. It's going to take a while. I think that we are. And, and one of my favorite um I guess, ways that I can see us spending money Mm -hmm. on state infrastructure is through the Emergency Road and Bridge Fund. That fund was established through the 2018 special session, and I have to give a shout-out to MDOT. They have done a tremendous job administering that program. The reason that I like it is it opens up funds for counties and municipalities to apply for projects. So it's a way that we are getting into the critical infrastructure needs, and and I think it's been successful. Have we done that before? Since 2018, that's when it was started, $250 million went in, and we put another $89 million in this past session. I was looking at some of the numbers from uh, Lottery, and I think this came in recently. It's uh, having never played Mississippi match five, past Christian players. I don't want to get into that. It was the amount of money tonight's Mega Millions and uh, it's some of the numbers, but the numbers on the lottery has just been absolutely. We, it's we, been mind We got to the 80, 85 million rather quickly. We did, certainly, certainly. With that in mind now, and seeing that the, with these numbers, you've got a better idea of what is possible. Will there be any move in the through your part in the 2022 session coming up in January to say, look, can we revisit that? Uh, maybe we could use because education's getting a heck of a lot of money here and there. We need it for bridge to adjust that, to that limit, that cap. So I think there's a lot of groups out there that are interested, obviously, in this extra money that's mm-hmm. there. My approach on road and bridge has been let's get our arms around the money that we have. I want to know more about the real numbers. I've only been chairing the committee for almost a year. And so Brad White and I have had several conversations. We plan to get together soon to get into the meat of what we have and how we can be efficient with those dollars. And then we'll see. We'll see sort of where we are. Who's the kind of part over the house? Charles Busby. That's right. And Charles does a good job. Great job. We've got some great leadership now. And I'll say that. Uh, while you're here, to you in the Senate, to Charles in the uh, in the House, and to Brad White, that's a great addition. Very excited about the future for infrastructure in Mississippi. I truly am. Brad has some different ideas to bring to that, and one of the things he said to me when he was on the air, uh, I, I find very interesting. He says we need to get back to being a true transportation department. Now, that, that, there's a lot you can read into that. What do you read into that? Well. I think he wants to get back to the heart of what MDOT was set up to do, and that is to build and maintain our infrastructure. And he agreed to work with me and say, hey, let's find if there are any places that were being inefficient with those dollars. One example, this past legislative session, we moved in the enforcement division from MDOT over to DPS because we felt like that's not a core critical function for MDOT. Let them handle the roads. Let the enforcement division handle that. We think things are going to run more smoothly that way. We hope.